Well, look at that. We got ourselves what looks like a brand new plow, but it's it's actually a really old plow, but it's been totally rebuilt front to back, top to bottom. Last year, I rebuilt these this bolt and uh, all new pivot points there. Fixed a bunch of other stuff. Uh, what else did I do? Yeah. Anyway. It wasn't a lot wrong with it, but it took a, it was a lot of work to change all that. And we just put a new end plate on the other end, this end here. Fixed up that bottom piece right there. There was nothing there. Completely worn out. And the bolt fell out. So, new back drag blade, new cutting edge. And over here, this is the end where we put the new end plate. This is an end plate off another plow we're not using right now, so I kind of robbed it from that plow. And it's going to be used on this one this winter. We drilled a hole, and we got our, our brace clipped in there. It's just painted, so it's just kind of swinging there in the breeze. There's only one pin at the top. And needs a second coat tomorrow. And hopefully Monday it'll be out of here ready for snow. It definitely needs paint on this tank before it leaks. And uh, I always try and spray those electric motors with some sort of WD-40 or something and try and keep the moisture out. And there's the cutting edge. You can see it's got the... He painted the... I told him don't bother cut painting the cutting edge, but he went ahead and painted it. And... Beautiful red braces are painted, the end plates are painted, everything looks good. We fixed the rubber uh, at the top over here, I think it was all cracked at the back. That's all welded in there, got kind of rusted and I think flexing from pushing snow and this rubber edge lifting kind of creates a metal fatigue from bending back and forth. That top... Uh, not braced strong enough for a, a rubber edge of this size. Really, I think the one that dealer sells is half this size, and it's very thin plastic. It bends quite easily. This one's pretty. This is a conveyor belt I had. Someone gave me. So we cut strips off of it and made the, these top rubber edges, which are great, but they're not very good for the road. Anyway, that's another story. So that's ready to be put back in the service there once we get the second coat on the back and the tractor fits in here the first time we've had this tractor for 14 years yeah there it is so uh that's a 90 that's about a 90 uh, don't, it's, not, it's 2001 or 2002 i believe uh Kubota m5700 and it's a five cylinder liquid cooled diesel nice little tractor it's a good size it's not too small it's not too too big we had to let air out of the back tires to get it in here. Uh, just squeaked through that door. It's an eight foot door and uh, the roof rubbed all the way in. And there's just a little mount at the back for the flasher, the roof flasher. It was sticking up higher than the roof and just to get it to clear, we had to let a bunch of air out of the back tires. So tomorrow the front wheels are coming off. They're going to go to a tire shop and have, we've ordered tires for it. They're in there, so they're going to be put on tomorrow. And uh, the reason why we brought it in right here is the uh, plow harness has been rebuilt. Brand new, 5 eighths beefed up, super strong, I believe. I think it's better than the original design. Tonight. I finished welding in a piece of flat bar there a couple of days. Yesterday, I think? Or, yeah, I think it was yesterday. I, I was hoping this would be done a long time ago, but... We're still, it just takes so much time to do this stuff. So we're going to give it a little scuffing up, cleaning up, wire brush and sandpaper and put some paint on that harness just to kind of make it look nice. I don't think it needs too, too much, but uh, it's a lot of bare metal there from the welds. And I think that's, actually, oh, we've ordered a new alternator on the other side. Okay, I said I ordered a new alternator. I didn't order one. What I did was um, I pulled that alternator off on Monday or Tuesday, and we brought it into a uh, a place that specializes in rebuilding starters, alternators, that sort of thing. They uh, they had a one heck of a time trying to find a parts kit for it. They could not, and they never did find one. So 
We just talked to the owner of the place today, and he spent a good hour trying to find a rebuild kit for that alternator, and there's nothing available. He's never had that happen to him, and he's been there for 30-some years. <laughs> Unheard of, he said, but uh, a new one, we called the dealer, and it's 1200 bucks, so or $1,100, $1 he said. So with tax, we're looking at major money, so uh, we're going to look on eBay tonight. It's a... Uh, the numbers say M5700, but there's a D, DTI or something. Uh, I got it in my phone here. Um, I've got the name of the, uh, the three letters that go after this to be able to narrow down what size alternator. I think any alternator would fit this, but because it has air conditioning, you need a, a larger amperage alternator. So if that's what it costs for an alternator, I hate to know what it costs for a starter. Although I think that guy can rebuild that. Who knows? So that's the kind of thing that starts going on a machine that's about 15, 16 years old, is stuff like that. Um, alternators, starters, uh, fans, fan motors, wiper motors. And it's the first set of tires we're going to buy for this. We've bought, we have both summer, which are turf tires, which are on the back, and we have winter, like the ag tires. And, uh, I left the turf tires on because they're so much lighter uh, to float this thing back and forth. Uh, I think the tires weigh um, over a thousand pounds each. With they have liquid in them as well. Uh, they have cast iron centers which are about four inches thick. So there's uh, there might be eighteen hundred pounds. I don't even know fifteen. I've never weighed them. So there's there's a a lot of weight to transport here and back out to the same site it's working at for nothing. They might as well leave. See, the, the ag tires are out there, so when we get it back, we'll jack it up, switch the tires, and it'll have the brand new front tires. Because these were so bald, these tires, we never put the turf tires on the front this summer. One of them had a leak, so I figured, you know, why bother? And it's in two-wheel drive all the time. The only time we uh, we pop it in the four-wheel drive is if we're spinning and we know we need it, so that's not a big deal if the if the tire sizes are not matching. For the four-wheel drive so but the ag tires the winter tires that go on the back they're old and they're worn a bit and these are these will be two brand new front tires i still think we'll be all right because if you're out on wet pavement we tend to you know slip it into two-wheel drive so okay i'm rambling too much but uh, that's what i've done this week this is thursday and uh it's raining out. That's why the tractor's all wet. We couldn't paint it outside. So I'm hoping we get that done. And next week, this is being... Uh, I hope we have the alternator. And uh, everything comes together and it's sent out to that site. We'll get the back tires on. No rush for that. Because we can use it on snow like it is right now. But... Uh, yeah. Things are wrapping up here. We're, we're going to be on to the next machine. Uh, my The truck I use has a plow that's about eight years old, and it needs a total rebuild on the center again. But I know what to do this time. It's uh, There's not any guesswork here. We're just going to get bring it in and get it done. I need a one-inch hole drilled through a piece of solid steel and or a bushing of some kind. I haven't really decided how I'm going to do it. i got to figure out what material I'll use, but I know what I have to do, and it shouldn't take too, too long, I hope. And that's it.